Hey everyone, it's Katie from Moonflower Moments. I'm hopping on here today to talk about something a little bit more vulnerable to me. So I'm currently in a space to where um, I am 1000% going through a death card period in my life. So I haven't experienced a physical death of anyone that I know um, and that I love, but I am like internally going through a massive death card period, you know, and I'm getting like tower for self identity and things like that. And I think it's important that when we're sitting into this space, uh, we need to leave ourselves room to kind of process it and get through it. I think in my life, I have always tried to kind of rush through healing. I've tried to schedule it in. I was talking to a friend of mine a few weeks ago and I told her, I was like, I'll have a breakdown about this like on Saturday when I have time. And she was like, you know, that's not how that works, right? And I'm like, oh, okay, I guess it's not how it works. But it's been a um, it's been a really transformative period for me just these last couple of weeks. And I want to come on here and share with you how I'm using tarot to help me manage that. Not, uh, you know, just to help me sit in it. Because I think sometimes we fall into the temptation or I fall into the temptation of trying to just over-intellectualize it and get through it. Uh, when sometimes I just need to be in it and I need to feel it. So... I'm going to share a recent reading that I did um, with you, and then I'm going to walk you through the decks that I've been using to help me through this period. I've been pulling tarot almost daily. It's funny how we get into a routine of only pulling tarot like for daily draws and just like every now and then for kind of like fun, and then we go through a massive period where we need to do 12 card spreads every day, <laughs> and that's where I am right now. Um, so I've been using my decks for that, and I want to share that with you. So that being said, I'm asking for a little space to be a little bit vulnerable, and uh, I really appreciate all of you being here. So I am the queen of like non-aesthetic tarot. This actually looks pretty good, but then I'm going to add some other cards and you're going to be like, wow, those don't look good together. I don't care. I'm a queen of non-aesthetic tarot. My decks fill very specific roles for me, so they don't have to look nice on the on camera. That doesn't bother me. Or even like on my table. It doesn't bother me. So I was working with Klimt and I was working with the Bug Tarot, which I'm going to show you in a few minutes and uh, a little bit more about this deck and explain why I've been using them. But I think that I pulled this last night for a specific reason, especially with these two decks being together. So I'm going through a process right now of really letting in people into my life as a, as a Cancer son. <laughs> I've not always been very good about letting go of my boundaries and, so, and uh, letting people in. And so I think that... I'm reaching a place where I'm very incredibly uncomfortable in some of my friendships because I'm getting closer to people. And at the point, this is the point where I would usually run away from friendships. When I've learned everything that there is to seemingly know about them or they've seemingly known about me, and then I'm like, okay, now you know everything, I'm too vulnerable, let me go ahead and leave. And I know that's a lot to share with YouTube, but I'm sure that some of you can relate because it is so scary when you are putting the ball in someone else's court and then you have to keep up with the maintaining of a friendship and not just the the building of one I guess there's there's some there's some differences between the two and so I had pulled for myself currently right now the hanged man and I just thought this was a very beautiful description because I think there are cards in the tarot that until we go through specific moments in our life we we don't really understand what they mean and then when we go through that process we're like oh wow my relationship with this card has completely changed and it has because i'm in this position right now especially with the the hanged man the death card and then also the emperor right here which i'll explain in just a second that i i can't really rush through this process i have to lean into these feelings that are making me uncomfortable i have to lean into these feelings that are making me incredibly vulnerable and i think when it comes down to it i'm stuck right? Like he could probably get out of this just like pretty much any hanged man could, but he, he's floating in midair. He doesn't have any structure that he's, he's sticking to. Like his body is literally, uh, levitating. And I think that's an interesting thing because it brings up the question of, is he choosing to levitate or are his situations just making him levitate? Does he have the power in this and controlling his fate or does he not? But most importantly to my experience is the sense of I am in this levitating space. You know, I I can feel that death coming on of some of the outdated beliefs of my life. Hello, Emperor. <laughs> some of the outdated things that I've always done. Um, but I mean, perhaps right now I'm more in like a hanged man death period, both of them, right? And I, I rock between them side by side. But the point is that I have to lean into being stuck and I have to lean into that death and I have to... Uh, surrender things that are outdated about myself 
So of course, because you pulled the hanged man, I wanted to bring out uh, the, the surrender cards. And so I did. And so to close off this reading of where I am right now, where I'm stuck um, in these cycles and uh, these cycles are dying and I'm moving forward and I'm getting rid of outdated beliefs, I thought the perfect way to end this was with a surrender card. And this is what I pulled. And it's just a powerful reminder um, of what tarot is, is that tarot can tell you exactly and always does tell you exactly what you need to hear in that moment. You know, I'm sitting here journaling and talking about how systems of friendships and the way I've approached friendships hasn't worked for me in my life. And then out comes this, you know, surrender outdated beliefs about yourself. I love it. And then also to from Earth Wisdom, heart healing. So I think that's relevant. So I know this was an unusual way to begin my video, but guys, listen, I'm just listening to the card. It says to surrender all data beliefs about yourself. I'm assuming that probably means on my channel too. So I wanted to share that with you to provide you some context. Um, so I'm also going to share some of the decks that I've been using to help me work through this. So I'll start with the two that we just discussed um, because I did pick those two decks for a specific reason. So I'll share that with you. So here are some more cards from Clamped I Edged Mine after seeing that Marlena Teresa had edged hers. Um, this deck is meant to be in black. So thank you to Marlena for showing off her edged job. I literally saw the video where she showed that off and then immediately went to grab my deck to edge it. Here we go. So I like Klimt in particular because Klimt is a messy deck. It's just a very messy deck. There's a lot of chaotic imagery. It's a low scale Bayo deck, which also means that um, it approaches the tarot in a very unique way. This is, of course, an art deck, so it wasn't made to be created into tarot. So the creator bent some of the interpretations when putting these paintings and matching them up with the tarot imagery. And I really love everything about that throughout this process. So as I'm going through this death period and I'm contemplating what it is I want out of life, but especially what I want in my friendships, that's a core part of who I am. I am utilizing this deck to help meet me in the messiness. So when I get cards that don't quite make a lot of sense, like this is, let's see. Yeah, here we go. Five of swords. I mean, I can see from her face, she does kind of look like haughty and it does kind of bring in that, that typical power struggle that's associated with like five of swords for me, but this is not a traditional viewpoint. So when I'm pulling these cards through my death process, I can't speed that process. I have to lean into that hanged man energy of just surrendering to the healing because I can't just read by rote memory with this deck. And that's why it's so valuable to me because I go to this deck with the hard feelings because this deck forces me to slow down and sometimes the imagery doesn't make sense to me. I think we all have decks where the imagery just confuses us sometimes. And I, I kind of like to keep those decks around because I think that sometimes I'm not supposed to know everything immediately. I had a friend do a tarot reading for me one time and the conclusion of the tarot reading was that I wasn't ready to know uh, what was there. Like there were some things I would just have to live through. The tarot wasn't gonna tell me ahead of time. And when my friend did that reading for me, it really did open up my eyes that sometimes tarot can tell us, hey, you're not supposed to know everything right now. I'm gonna leave you a little bit more confused. I'm gonna leave you with questions uh, so that you can engage with the world in a, a deeper capacity. And I think that's beautiful. Sometimes we get into the habit of using tarot and we're just looking for that quick answer, but we're not taking the time to really use tarot to help us formulate questions, right? Like if tarot is giving us the answer, I think that's a beautiful thing. And like I have some decks that I'm gonna show that do that for me, but I also want the ones that help me to question what's going on around me so that way I can be a more active participant in my life. <clears throat> and I think that Klimt is filling that role for me right now because uh, it's not a straightforward shooter because it's very pokey and kind of like angular and it kind of shoots for the juggler for me a little bit. I appreciate what it does. So this was Klimt. My deck that meets me in my messiness just put that over here on the side. So while I'm reading with Klimt, I always will grab a sort of Pip style deck to kind of anchor the reading. So if I have a deck that's like very chaotic and imagery, I want something that's paired back to give me something that's grounded to hold on to. 
And so I quite oftentimes reach for pip decks, specifically black and white decks for that reason. When I become really overwhelmed, um, my favorite thing in the world to do is ground. You know, there is definitely a quote that talks about it's not enough for me to step on the grass. I need to be like inside of the earth. And that's very much how I feel all the time when I'm really stressed. And so when I'm not physically able to lay on the ground, because like we had a hurricane this past week, so I definitely couldn't go outside during that. Um, I need to rely on the bug tarot to give me that sense of groundedness. This deck makes me feel like I am one with the earth. It makes me feel like I'm one with the dirt. It gives me that impression of just being completely integrated with everything that is around me naturally. And that can be incredibly supportive to me throughout this hanged man death process as well. Because like if I'm in this hanged man state um, where I am stuck and I don't know where to go next, I think it's a beautiful thing to work with this deck, which I do dub my hanged man deck because of all of the little buggos that are in here. You know, the hanged man is encouraging you to slow down and see things from a different perspective. The bugs do that all the time for me. And I know sometimes when I talk about that, y'all are probably like, that is so crazy, but it is true. I think I experience a spirit the most through the smallest of, of the world's creatures. But it does help to remind me that sometimes when I feel alone in the messiness, that I'm not alone. You know, there are these beautiful like sticks and buggos. I don't know if a wasp would be considered. I mean, they're beautiful. They're just not my favorite. <laughs> that was funny. This popped up. Um, the sticks and then also the bones, the beetles, the flowers. Everything has its time and everything has its place and everything is connected to me. So when I'm through that, when I'm going through that messiness and Clint is telling me that everything is up in the air, the bug tarot is there to remind me to give that basis for, for me to fall. So if I, when I, when I'm ready to fall, when I'm ready to just completely let go of what needs to be let go of, there's, there's that ground. There's something stable for me to collect myself on. So this is the bug tarot. I have another deck that kind of fills a similar role to that. And that's going to be my Mushroom Hunter's Tarot. This deck seasonally is really working for me right now because we are experiencing a lot of heavy rain. Like I said, we just had a hurricane, so my yard is full of mushrooms. But it actually is mimicking it perfectly, the internal processes that are going inside of me. So with the bug tarot, it reminds me that I have that, that basis of soil to come back to. I am a very um, earth-based person. <laughs> I have a lot of earth in my chart. It's my most heavy um, element with air being second. But I, I sometimes, it, I, I want the dirt that the, the bug tarot gives me. I want the creatures that the bug tarot gives me. But I also want to be reminded that I'm connected to other people through the mycelium layers. And so mushrooms, um, they communicate with each other. And actually what we see on the surface um, of a mushroom is actually more of a fruit. The body of the, mu the mushroom, the fungus itself, lives mostly underground through the myce mycelium. And then it connects to other mycelium webs as well. And I think that that is a perfect description of what I need right now in my life. I can pull a card from this and I can always be constantly entranced and constantly reminded that I'm not alone, that there are other people that are going through similar situations, people that are going through similar battles. And all I have to do is just kind of nudge to them through my mycelium web and say, hey, how's it going? Because mushrooms do send nutrients back and forth to each other. And there's something deeper that's below our, our earth that they're participating in this process in. And I think we as humans do that all the time. If we, you know, we might not communicate through the bottom of the earth, like below the ground, but we do communicate in subtle ways through our body language and the intonations of our voice. And I think the mycelium um, helps remind me to look for the ways that we communicate with others that is not apparent. Uh, we might have to dig a little bit deeper to see it but we are communicating all the time. So it gives me that basis of saying, hey, I'm not alone. I have others that are around me and uh, they're there if I need them. So like I said, we, we have a vulnerable conversation today. But I love love the Mushroom Hunters Tarot for that. Um, I've also thought about getting the Midnight, is it called Midnight Magic Tarot? Because it's also with mushrooms, but I think this is my one. All right, then I have another deck that I recently talked about on my channel too. 
I um, I was talking to my friend earlier before I made this video and I said, hey, I really am kind of embarrassed that like I just made a video about like what the vibes were and then a lot of the decks that I'm showing in this video are the same decks and she was like, no, it totally makes sense. If you're continually circling, circling around to an issue or continually sitting in a mood, you're constantly going to be going back to these decks, but you're going to be seeing them in different ways. And so I think that's what this is for me. This is Mystical Dreams Tarot. This is what I call my grief deck because it is so, uh, the imagery is so unusual that it allows me to work through my grief and my grief is very unusual. It manifests in very different ways than what I would consider most people's. Um, I really have a lot of delayed processing around grief and I don't mean just like the death of other people but like missed opportunities. I will grieve missed opportunities years and years and years afterwards. And so this deck is really helping me to sit within that in regards to um, friendships and the connections that I have made in my life. I had to pause that for a second. You probably couldn't tell because I've gotten pretty good at pausing. <laughs> but I was like, am I about to say it? And I'm like, Katie, you already said it. So just go ahead and say it already. But anyway, I think it's normal to, uh, be, to be a little bit nervous about being a little bit vulnerable. So Mystical Dreams, um, I do use it for all stages of grief work, but it really is slotting into it right now where I'm realizing I don't have to use it just for like physical deaths, but I can use it with uh, the, the grief of missed opportunities is what I'm going to say. I love this deck so much. I love the colors. I love how watery it is. Um, this is definitely one of the death decks that are in my collection. I like too that the figures a lot of times are alone. There's something about that that gives me a lot of um, relief, I think. Okay, so here we actually have three people that are together, but for the most part, a lot of the figures are by themselves. And I like that. It's a very introspective little deck. And this is, um, this is the Knight of Pentacles, one of my absolute favorite depictions of the Knight of Pentacles ever. All right, next is going to be similar but different. It's going to be Dream Enchantress. Um, I don't know why I need this deck and I need Mystical Dreams, but I need them both very desperately. So on the surface level, you would think that they kind of do the same job because they have like similar color palettes and they're, they're tarot, but like tarot with a bend. But guys, I need both of them. I can't explain it. I need both of them. They do the same work. They look very similar, but I need both of them. They're, the way I think that they talk to me is a little bit different. So Mystical Dreams, which is the deck that I just showed, is a lot uh, slower for me to interpret. It's a lot more like messy. It's like in the process of grief. This one helps me meet me in the messiness of grief and it helps me meet me in the messiness of just like going through the process. But I like that it has little subtle reminders of life. So this girl in the Four of Cups is actually sniffing this flower, right? And there's all different types of creatures by her. Here's like this weird like crustacean. Uh, she has a monkey back here. I think that's like a little frog right here. I like that so many of the images have other people because like I said, it, it is nice to be reminded of those connections. This is the Nine of Cups. And like for me, it always was very important that the Nine of Cups, the person was by themselves because I think it's a lot about like internal happiness and like self-care. Um, but this actually talks about how uh, she, she can go anywhere she wants in life. And like that is internal bliss. And she has like a little friend that's with her. So I think that that's nice. Like cards that I would typically demand to be like one person cards, this deck will throw in another person. Like, look at this, like this is four of swords. Why do we have two people? That's such a strange thing, but I love it because it really does tell us like, hey, we can rest and we can we can hold ourselves back from all of this activity and this action to heal ourselves. But in that process, we can look for that friend to hold our hand while we're doing it. I like it. I like it. I mean, they're just animals galore in this deck. So I guess I just realized, um, I just said 10 seconds ago that this deck does the same job as Mystical Dreams. No, it doesn't. I guess it does meet me in the hard place, but it does have that subtle reminder, kind of like the mushrooms, that other people are here for the ride too. All right, here we go. This was, mystical, uh, this was Dream Enchantress. 
and I did edge this one too so if you buy it it won't come like that all right and what kind of uh hanged man death kind of video would it be if I didn't show somnia so I have a tricky relationship with this deck I did recently discover that it works really well as like a book pairing so I like to, to use this deck when reading heavier literature such as like Margaret Atwood's books because they have like that tint of melancholia to them so I did bond a little bit more with this deck because of that and because I bonded a little bit more with it because of that, I have been looking for other ways to integrate it into my practice. And right now, this feels like a deck for the liminal space between the hanged man and the death, which might actually be where I am right now, is that liminal space of, I know that I'm holding on, um, but like, what comes next? I haven't quite killed off all the things that I that need to die. I haven't quite gone through that death experience, but I definitely am standing there and I know that I need to. And so I think that this deck uh, symbolizes that well because when we're hanging upside down with the hanged man, we're seeing things from a new clarity. We're seeing things from a new point of view. And it becomes, I think, abundantly clear to us what we need to see in that moment. I like that Somnia, the imagery for the most part is really paired back because it's like, hey, Katie, this is the next step for you. It almost feels as if this is a big picture kind of deck of these are the next steps that you need to take as you transition between the hanged man and then also into death. This is what this is what is coming or this is what you need to do. It feels very advice driven, but because of the nature of the deck with everyone wearing these shrouds, it does seem to fit that I might not know all of the details of what this plan is going to look like, just like I don't know all of the details of these individuals because I can't see their faces. But I do know that I have a general idea. I have kind of a conceptualization of what to expect and do in the future. I'm going to have to listen to that again and make sure that it makes sense. But I think it does. I'm letting my intuition speak right now. And so I'm definitely much in a flow state of this is what this deck feels like to me. It's kind of like what Don Michelle always says. It's very hard to describe that felt experience. So yeah, I think she's she's a deck that helps me look out to the future. And I don't know all of the details. The details are a little bit murky because the faces are, are covered. But I am in that hanged man position to where I can see what's next. And I can see what's coming. But we're not quite in that death period yet because I feel like with the death period, it's more like Dream Enchantress and um, Mystical Dreams where it's messier and where it's wilder and where you're unsure of things. This one, it feels more grounded than that. So we're not into the death yet, but we're getting a sort of feeling of what's to come. Yep. So Somnia. All right, so I did say that I have the tendency to try to schedule my healing and rush my healing. Um, so I tried to make sure that the next portion of the list is a very select few decks because the purpose of it, of the, the hanged man, the death energy, is not so you can just hurry up and get through it. It's, it's, it's for you. It's, the purpose is to get through it, but not to get through it so you're over with it. The purpose is to, to go through it so you can process it. But I think sometimes we recognize that like, okay, I have been crying about something for like the past like 12 hours and I have a migraine. Cause like, honestly guys, that's where I'm at right now. But I still have to go into my job and I still have to do what needs to be done. And so I'm gonna share with you the decks too that have been useful for me um, in terms of self-soothing through this kind of hanged man death process because I think that's an important part of it. While I would like to sit into the mystical dreams energy all day and the dream enchantress and Klimt and just and be very messy through it, you know, I think we all do still have responsibilities that we need to take care of. So I think that the these next three decks are going to be the decks that I use to help me laser focus in on um, what the big picture is. So that way I can still keep these themes of um, processing and transformation in mind, but I can also see healing at the end of the tunnel so that I have enough strength to make it through the week is what I would say. 
that sounded like really bad. Y'all don't worry about me too much. I have a really good group of people that are that are by me. I have a lot of like good coping mechanisms. I'm good, guys. I'm good. I'm just going through it. <laughs> so that being said, um, one of the decks that I use to help give me perspective would be Little Birds or Little Bird. Actually, I always add an extra S, but I know it's not. So I love this deck right now, Seasonly. I mentioned this in my other deck because we have a lot of hummingbirds in our yard right now. So I like that this is matching uh, what's going on in my yard. I've also been working with a lot of botanicals, and so I appreciate that. But in terms of what this, this deck has been doing for me emotionally right now, is that this deck is my big picture deck. This deck, as a matter of fact, is the reason that I know I'm, I'm going into... A death process right now because I had pulled four, two cards just a two card reading a couple weeks ago and I actually I set these cards aside they've been on my on my altar for a little minute I got death and I got three of wands so here I am right now shedding letting go and then here I am right now three of wands this little bird that's looking out over the lake she still has this soft pad for her to land in. She still has that place that is going to protect her, but she is definitively looking forward and trying to make movement after going through this death process. So this deck has been pointing out to me the larger themes that are going on in my life in regards to um, death, transformation, liminal space, healing. I know guys, I keep switching between topics, but I think that's part of the mess, right? <laughs> and that's part of the beauty of this deck is that when I sit down to read with it and say, okay, what, what can I actually do about this? What can I do about this today? I know that I can't rush through this. I know I need to embrace the process, but what can I do about it today? These birds have been very helpful to me in that part of the healing process by giving me straightforward advice. I mean, if we think about what birds do all the time, birds see the world from a bird's eye point of view. And so this deck helps me, especially with this paired back imagery, to take a step back, to take a breather, because I think that rest through transformational periods, rest through healing process is just as important as doing the actual work itself. So this deck has been powerful in its ability to give me those breaks to give me that uh, sense of levity because I really do think that these words are so cute and I love how they interact with each other they make my heart so happy it just gives me a little blip of happiness um, but also that perspective I need to see that what I'm going through is not permanent right the klimt tarot is very dark the bug tarot is very dark somnia is very dark the other decks that i've shown today have been very detailed and this because it's so pared back it's like listen i'm gonna meet you where you're at i do recognize the fact that you're in a death period but i want you to know that it isn't going to be forever and you have that opportunity to to see more just like a bird that's going to migrate multiple times in its lifetime you're going to shed yourself multiple times in your lifetime so that's Little Birds. Uh, instantly has become one of my favorite decks in my collection. And like these two cards, I mean, I don't know when they're going to leave my altar, but it's not going to be anytime soon. All right, so I know that this one has been shown a lot on my channel recently too, and this is the Queen of the Moon Oracle. I hated this deck and now I love it. So that's a different video. Decks I've done a complete like 180 on. That's a different video. I need to make that video because this deck is the whole reason that I've been thinking about decks that have, uh, my views have shifted very recently on. And that's okay. Like I said before, if I'm going through this massive death process, if I'm sitting here evaluating and assessing in that hanged man position, I think it's normal that my practice is shifting too. So getting that out of the way, I said recently that this deck has been helping me through the busyness of the school year because pulling one card gives me something to focus my day on. I've been using it a lot for daily draws and I think that's true. But what I didn't realize when I made that video is it's also helping me through the messiness of all the feelings because I'm so busy with school. I'm also not recognizing how much I'm feeling, but then, you know, it's like I said, delayed processing. I totally have that. So I appreciate this deck and its clarity because all I sometimes need along with that little bird tarot is just one keyword to help me focus myself and to give me that little bit of boost to get through that moment, to get through that day, to put on that brave face 
in times when I don't have the opportunity to do the hard work that I really want to do. Guys, if I could take a whole week off to do the hard work, I probably would. But realistically speaking, it's you can't do that. So I think that we do need decks like this to help us through that that period, those times in our life where we just need that one keyword to give us something to focus on, uh, to give us that that resilience to to meet that world with that brave face that day. So that's what this deck has become for me. I did a little, um, I went out on Friday with a friend and we pulled from this deck and I thought it was really beautiful because this was her card growth and this was my card self-reflection. And it, we had pulled these cards right after spending a lot of time talking about our lives and how she's going through this growth period and I'm going through this period of self-reflection and, and that's what it is. But I think this deck has a beautiful way, even though it's only, what, 44 cards? I don't know how many cards it is. 42 cards, something like that. Um, the It doesn't have a lot of words, but like I'm starting to understand that sometimes one word can contain so much, is what I'm going to say. So I'll leave that one there. And then, of course, another one that you've seen. I did edge this one, um, just in case... You need to know. I also edged Queen of the Moon uh, Oracle, too. I've been edging decks a lot. I've been finding it's been helping me to stay connected to my tarot practice, even when I'm a little bit overwhelmed doing the work at this table. I can just, like, pop on a video and edge a deck, and it's it's one of the ways I've been staying, um, I think, grounded within my practice. So this is Earth Wisdom. I've spoken in a past video about how it has like all of these words about healing. We have boundaries, we have divine connection, self-acceptance, divine protection, strength, nurture, responsibility. Guys, this is a perfect healing deck. So I thought that I was going to use this for other people. Nope. I've been using this one for me. I've been pulling about one card a week from this deck and placing it on my altar. It's been really well suited for those particular types of practices. Um, because it's given me the opportunity to see things from a larger picture. And it, honestly, like, I love when it tells me something straightforward like truth. I'm like, I can remember that. That's an easy one. Joy. I can remember that. That's easy. Rest. Yes, ma'am. I totally will rest. So I like it. I like it. Yeah, I my my views on oracles have totally shifted since the last time I made my practice. But guys, I use my decks. I... I am such a spiritually grounded person through through tarot that it totally makes sense that as I grow and as I, I develop, my practice does too. And I think that's the beauty of sharing this space is that I get to look back on um, all the growth I've made just in a few months, but I also get to reflect on everyone else's growth too. I like when people come on YouTube and they say, hey, my opinions have changed about this one particular thing. I'm now interested in blah, blah, blah. I'm totally down for it. Um, I think... I probably am in that liminal space between the hanged man and death. So there's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of shedding to do. There's a lot of um, processing to do. But it's good to know that I have tarot to support me through it. And then also that I can come on my channel and be very vulnerable with you guys. So I hope that all of you have a beautiful day. I thank y'all so much for watching my channel, for supporting my channel, for being here. I do really enjoy inhibiting this space. And so much of it is because of you guys. So... I hope that all of you have a great day and I'll see y'all next time.